you grew up in, in a very rough neighborhood in South Bronx. Yes. That's hard enough itself. Yeah. To, to that. Tell us a little bit about that. What was that like for you growing up in the Bronx? It was difficult. You know, both of my parents had drug problems. Yeah. Um, they were addicted to drugs. and But I didn't know anything else. So I did every day the best that I could as a child. Yeah. You know, we lived in a five-story walk-up. Had to walk up five flights of stairs every day, you know. Good um, exercise. Yeah. <laughs> played on, you know, played outside in the front of the, in the front on the block. Right. Stick ball and in the fire hydrant. And, you know, it was fun. There was also good things about it. Yeah. And I learned values. And I learned how to hustle. And I learned loyalty and integrity. It's interesting that when you're a child growing up like that, mm -hmm. and that's all you know, you don't really see it the way a person like who is not growing up in that would see that because that's all you know. It just seems like right. normal, right? Right. Yeah. It seemed normal. You Amazing. Know, and so I read that you uh, you saw your first dead body yeah. while walking to preschool. Yeah. Uh, by yourself at three years old. I, I wasn't. No, I wasn't alone. I was with the babysitter. Okay. Um, and we were walking, and I looked over, and there was a kid under a car. And he had a little afro, and I'll never forget it. His eyes were open, and I just remember looking in his eyes and realizing that he was gone. Did it seem weird? It didn't seem weird. It was a very profound moment. There was a peace, and from that moment, I never feared death. Really? Yeah. So you're not afraid of death today? You're not no. afraid of dying? No, I'm not. Interesting. Maybe that's why that happened for you then. Yeah. Children are not afraid of things like that, all right? No. Yeah. yeah. No. So both of your parents were addicted. Yes. And um, what's that? I mean, did you know that, like, wow, my parents are on drugs and no, now I have a deal? No, I didn't realize it. I didn't know it until um, I said it in my book. Until I was around 12, I found, you know, my father's kit. And uh, I, I threw it in the woods because I had previously walked in the bathroom on him shooting up wow. um, with my uncle. And something in my mind thought, okay, this isn't right. And uh, I threw the kit in the woods <laughs> behind my grandmother's house. And that was the first time my father ever hit me oh. because he needed it. Yeah. And so I ran to the woods and I, in the night, at night and went through the woods and found it and got it for him. Really? But that's, you know, now, as I've become a woman and I've learned about this sickness of addiction, yeah. it is an illness. Yeah. It's a disease. What was it like when he hit you for the first time? It was staggering, but I knew it wasn't him. Right. I could tell it wasn't him. You know, there was did, something else possessing him. Did he ever apologize for that? Of course, yeah. yes. My Are father your parents was, still living? My mother just passed in November. Really? I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Um, before she uh, expired, did you guys make up for all that yes. stuff? Yes. Yeah, you forgave her? Yes. And did you tell her that? Yes. What was that like? It was amazing. I'm so grateful because before that, we didn't have a relationship. Yeah. And I got to have my mommy back for three days before she passed. One of the things through my nonprofit organization, I encourage men and women to go to their parents and forgive them. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of parents can't help themselves. Yeah. And a lot of times they don't realize what they're doing to their children. But if you hold on to that anger, yeah. you become like the person that you're angry at. You That's take right. on their identity and you repeat that life cycle, mm -hmm. doing the same thing to yourself and to your children. That's right. How about your father? Did you forgive him as well? He OD'd and died the day before my son was born. So um, I did get to speak to him, and I hadn't spoken to him for years. Right. And uh, he called, and I got to say, I love you. And he said he loved me. But for some reason, I never had any anger for him, or I didn't think I did, yes. until later in life, until about 21 months ago. I realized, oh, I am angry with him. Right. Because he chose drugs over me. But in reality, that's not the truth. No, he was he sick. Did. Yeah, he didn't just. He had an addiction. Yeah. 
So I forgive him. And so how are you doing now? How you, how, how you, within I am, yourself and I'm better than I've ever been because I've come to know the Lord and I've, allowed, I've surrendered. I, <laughs> I have finally surrendered. And you're free? And I'm free. And what does freedom look like? Freedom looks like power and joy and peace, no anger. Now that's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have to watch all the time and pray to God to help me all the time because I'm human. I, um, I had to forgive my mother because she hated my father mm -hmm. and so she tried to turn me away from him. Mm -hmm. And the worst thing that can happen to boys and girls, men and women, is to be turned away from their fathers Yes, because it leaves a void, an empty, deep down in your soul, it leaves an emptiness there. And nothing else can fulfill that except a return to the Father. Right. And so God allowed me to see that 29 years ago. I had all this conflict, fear, and doubt, and worry. I didn't know what I wanted to do in life, and it was just awful. And he, so I asked him to let me see myself, and he allowed me to see that I had this dark spirit in me that came from mm -hmm. anger, which is the nature of Satan. Yes. And that uh, if I forgave, then he would forgive me. So I went and forgave my mother. And for the first time, she told me about her life, and exactly what she had done to me was done to her. Mm -hmm. And she apologized, she didn't mean to do it. Then I went to my father and, and asked him what happened with him, and he told me. And my father and I became one, and he gave me, God gave me perfect peace. And 27 years have gone by. I've gone through so much hell, especially being a conservative black person. Yeah. You know I, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> No. Uncle Tom, sell out, cool, have yeah, guns right? on me. Yeah. But I still have that perfect peace. Mm -hmm. Nothing can interfere with that. So I understand what you mean by that freedom. Yes. It's such a nice way to live. Yeah. I also read that you had to go live with a, a family who did not protect you and that you were sexually abused. Yes. Tell us about that. I was four. You were four years old. Mm. How old was the, the guy that was doing this? He was thing? a teenager. Wow. 17. Yeah. And w when that started to happen to you, what went through your mind at four years old? Did you understand what was no, happening? No, yeah. I didn't. I didn't understand. Um, right. I just knew it didn't feel right. Yeah. You know, and you feel shameful and, uh, you know, there was and, no understanding of it. But as you grow up, you know, it's, it's, there's a shame. Yeah. And that's the thing I've had to realize that I didn't do anything wrong. Oh, you thought that it was, you had something to do with it? Yeah, really? you do when you Even when that as happens. an adult, knowing that you were four years old, you thought you had something to do it's, with it? It's it's not reasonable. Right, I understand. Right, yeah. it comes from it's 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 something that it, unless you look at it, you don't even know it's there. Right, propelling you and making you make choices that you would have never made had you looked at it and dealt with it. Yeah, and that's why I'm so grateful. Because I've been looking at myself inside. That's right. And dealing with me. That's right. And to know thyself is to, I right. mean, to overcome this stuff is to know thyself. And realizing that yourself. all these things that have happened to me in the past right. have been making me make the choices of my life. That's right. You know, I would think, and I know a lot of people don't do it, but at four years old, why did you tell this boy's mother? You know, like, you know, your son did something nasty. I didn't to me. tell. And what were you afraid to? Yeah, I mean, I didn't tell, but it was apparent. So, um, you know, it was apparent, and they just hit it. Also, the, his 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 uh, mother knew about it, mm -hmm. father and mother, mm -hmm. and they knew about it, but didn't say anything or do mm -hmm. anything. No. How did you find that out? Well, I I could I knew they made they let me know, and basically told me don't say anything. Wow. And I couldn't because my parents were very young. Yeah. And, you know, doing drugs and trying to survive, and they couldn't keep me at the time. I didn't even speak English at that time. I spoke Spanish was my first language. They were Cuban. Mm. Yeah. So I would go home and talk to my mother, because my, my grandparents didn't speak, teach my mother Spanish. Mm. I would speak Spanish, and she couldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't understand me. That's, that's what she gets, right? <laughs> wow. And so you just dealt with that, just... Did it uh, awaken like a darkness in you yes. where now you yearn for sex and men and all that stuff? Oh yeah, when I was younger, yeah. absolutely. I made a lot of bad choices yeah. because of that. 
And I, but now I know. Of course. Now I know. So have you forgiven yourself for that too? Yes. Thinking that it was you and judging yourself? Yes. Yeah. And that is the hardest thing to do. Forgiving yourself is the hardest thing to do. And, and why? I don't know. I wish I had an answer for that. Yeah. Um, but the only way to forgive yourself is to know Jesus and to know God and His forgiveness and His love. Yeah. And if he can forgive, who are you not to forgive yourself? That's right. Or forgive anyone else? He doesn't hold, that's right. He doesn't hold anything against you. Right. Once you realize that you're wrong, if you do something wrong, you're wrong. Right. And that very moment is over with. That's right. But the problem is Satan will try to remind you of it and make you think. He's that a liar and a over. thief. He is. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's why I tell people all the time not to believe the voice in your head. Mm -mm because that is the voice of Satan, mm -hmm. and he's constantly reminding you of the past that doesn't exist, That's right. or a false future, but if you follow the revela revelation of God, you're gonna be in his presence, mm -hmm. and you can be free. Right. Because he never judges you. Right, if you stay in the past, you just live in the guilt of the past, and you have no hope for the future. Yeah, that's right.